Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, the Russian President Vladimir Putin's just been in Mongolia for a scheduled visit. Now, Alan Bator and Moscow have long-standing history of co collaboration. However, this alliance is facing some challenges from Western countries seeking to source rare earth metals in Mongolia. Russia, on the other hand, doesn't regard Mongolia as merely a source of resources, which is a significant competitive advantage. So what is the future relationship like between Moscow and Olin Bator? Well, the official program of Vladimir Putin's visit to Mongolia, which started on September 3rd, is he will participate in events commemorating the 85th anniversary of the joint victory of Moscow and Ulan Bator over Japanese troops on the Kalingol River. Additionally, he will meet with his counterpart, the head of the Republic, Umagin Kurelsik, and it's anticipated that a number of bilateral documents will be signed. Now, the relationship between Mongolia and Russia has been developing in a positive, productive manner for some time. I mean, in the first two months of 2024, Moscow accounted for 28% of Mongolia's imports. In this regard, Russia is the second largest trading partner of Mongolia after China. Now, the majority of the trade is accounted for by petrol and diesel fuel, as well as ammonium fertilizers. Furthermore, there's military contacts. In August, the Russia-Mongolia Selenga 24 exercises were conducted, during which the Republic's armed forces collaborated uh, with Russian and <coughs> on various exercises and unified control signals for defensive purposes. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com and further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. Now, we are also seeing between Russia and Mongolia the formation of new partnerships in the energy sector. I mean, in December of last year, Rosatom Energy Pro Projects and Mon Atom entered a preliminary agreement regarding the construction of a low-power nuclear plant in the country. Now, Russia, as you know, our, our Rosatom are experts and uh, probably the best at low-density uh, uh, power plants. Now, Diane Deke Energy is exploring the possibility of collaborating with Moscow not only on nuclear, but also on wind and hydroelectric power uh, projects. Now, particular focus is also given to the development of other sectors of industry. In an interview with the Mongolian newspaper Onador, Vladimir Putin highlighted that the governments of both countries are working on a number of new and promising projects. Now, these include the construction of a trans-Mongolian gas pipeline from Russia to China, but that will also provide Mongolia with gas. Also, the modernization of the other joint venture, the Ulaanbaatar Railway, and the participation of Rosneft in providing an aircraft fueling complex at the new Genghis Khan International Airport. Now, another project is a reconstruction of the Ulaanbaatar Thermal Power Plant 3, which will be carried out with Interrao E Export and Mongolia's accession to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization will also further strengthen the bilateral relationship between the two countries. I mean, in May, <coughs> Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov indicated his support for the country's inclusion in the organization. I mean, obviously, Mongolia could facilitate enhanced connectivity between uh, Moscow and Beijing within the SCO. I mean, currently, Western countries are also interested in strengthening their ties with Alan Bator. I mean, uh, for example, last year, the country was visited by the French President Emmanuel Macron, who advocated for the enhancement of the Republic's collaboration with the nucle French Nuclear Technology Corporation, Arano, which expands, aspires to expand its local uranium production. I mean, we do know that Macron needs uranium since France was kicked out of Niger and Africa. Macron was also in Kazakhstan at the same time, begging for uranium there. Of course, the interest in Mongolia is obviously attributed to its vast mineral resources. 
Call it the PRR Centre. They estimates the total reserves of rare earth metals in, in Mongolia is about 3.1 million tonnes. And so Germany, France, United States and South Korea are already engaged in competition for control of these resources. All of them are actively investing in this area. I mean, Berlin's already secured the status of a strategic partner of Olympator. Well, Paris is seeking to construct a nuclear power plant in the Republic, but that's unlikely to happen given that Rosatom is close by and is far more respected in the nuclear energy sector. Also, Seoul's been exerting influence in the Republic and it's been trying to develop legislation to improve the investment climate there. Now, there's a trilateral commission on rare earth elements in the form of Mongolia, South Korea and the USA in operation. Yeah, rare earth elements again. And the US will be friends with anybody who has them except Russia and China. Nevertheless, analysts maintain that Russia should not be concerned about Mongolia's enhanced relations with Western countries and should be concentrating on its core competencies. I mean, after all, Russia's major competitive advantages over its Western counterparts is it doesn't view Mongolia as a mere source of raw materials. It has enough of its own. I mean, Russia's key economic projects uh, with Mongolia are the export of electricity and energy resources, as well as the construction of the small-scale nuclear power plants where Rosatom is the global leader. Furthermore, Russia's got extensive experience in global geological exploration and there's a need to enhance the scientific collaboration with the Mongolians in this field. Also, the collaboration and the resource exploitation uh, and exploration is a significant area that Russia can benefit Mongolia. Now, energy consumption in Mongolia is expected to grow by 6 to 7% annually, and that's driven by the high economic growth rates. So in general, the relationship between Mongolia and Russia is a comprehensive strategic partnership. I mean, the countries maintain close economic ties and they're comprehensive in nature and they cover a multitude of promising sectors. So Vladimir Putin's visit will probably result in the introduction of several new and significant initiatives according to Vladimir Grenovsky who's head of the Mongolian sector of the Korean and Mongolian department of the Russian Institute of Oriental Studies. I mean, it's anticipated that there will be an increase in the supply of Russian oil products, mainly because they're, they're in, in pretty much needed. And the fact that there's a new oil refinery being built in, uh, in Mongolia with the assistance of a loan from India. So that's going to significantly increase the demand for raw materials in the near future. And of course, Russia, being Mongolia's neighbour, can provide that. I mean, another item on the agenda is the potential establishment of a free trade zone between the Eurasian Economic Community and Mongolia. I mean, after all, they're all neighbours. And that would have a favourable impact on trade with Alan Bator. So it's probable that the leaders will deliberate on the implementation of the substantial gas pipeline project, the Power of Siberia 2. I mean, again, this initiative is a trilateral one. That involves Russia, China and Mongolia, and despite some challenges in its implementation, all the parties involved recognise the importance of these plans. So this bodes well for the future, the analyst adds. It's also worth noting that Beijing doesn't view the strengthening of ties between Moscow and Alan Bator as a threat. I mean, Mongolia is currently maintaining a balance in its relationship between Russia and China and it's pre prepared to consider each as other's interests and not pursue projects that could potentially harm each other. Furthermore, Mongolia adheres to a multi-vector approach within the framework of seeking to develop ties with Western countries and that should be treated with the respect and understanding that it deserves. I mean, Mongolia plays a significant role in Russia's strategy of diversifying its foreign relationship towards the East, according to Stanislav Tychenko, who's Professor of European Studies and International Relations at St. Petersburg University. He said, Ulaanbaatar is now a focal point in international politics, with a number of major powers vying for its attention. 
I mean, this passage of time is on Moscow's side. Other countries have a long-standing and beneficial uh, historical partnership with Mongolia. I mean, from even during the Soviet era, the relations with Mongolia were particularly strong and the level of friendship remains as high as ever. I mean, there's no concerns that Alain Bator developing relations with France or the United States, according to him. He says that that's standard practice for a country situated between two major powers like China and Russia. I mean, in a multipolar world, it's essential for a sovereign state to approach and have a multi-vector approach. In light of these circumstances, it's crucial for Russia to maintain a respectful stance towards its neighbour and explore the mutual benefit uh, avenues for engagement. I mean, with regards to China, I don't believe that the developing relations with Moscow will have any impact on Russia's friendship with Mongolia. And they've already gained valuable experience in building up ties with North Korea and Vietnam. So it's worth noting that these countries also play an important role in Beijing's traditional perception of international uh, politics. So, so there are going to be some challenges emerging. I mean, for instance, there were disagreements over the construction of the railway tracks in Mongolia with the Russian and Chinese gauges both being in contention. But that problem was solved. And like all these things, these crucial to emphasise that they're prepared to discuss and engage on these matters in the context of a trilateral collaboration. So consequently, as we look at it, the USA is moving into an area where it looks to it can compete with Russia and China. But with Mongolia about to join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, it really has missed the boat. I mean, the US might get some of the rare earth metals it seeks, but not the control of them that it wants. And as for Europe, it may get some uranium, but not a lot of influence in Russia and China's backyard. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen and making a small donation. Don't forget to comment in the comments section because I love interacting with all of you and I'll get back to you as many of you as I can. Thank you.